Hello everyone, my name is Robin and welcome back to Doki Doki Salvation Remake. So in the last episode, we wake up in the middle of the night, notice that Ziri's lights are still on. We go inside and see that she's uh, hung herself and we tie her, get her to the hospital and fortunately save her life. However, she's in a bit of a coma. After that, we just go back home to get some more sleep and now we're here. So let's continue from that. Something's different, definitely different here. I'm all, I've lost control over these files. Why? Game is continued despite all this. Are things meant to play out this way? Suki and Yuri are acting quite different as well. In any case, this shouldn't be a problem. I got this. Though if I'm being honest, seeing how everyone's reacted to all this has been interesting. They really don't feel this way. I can't feel at all. Although, Sayori's heart monitor still rings in my head over and over and over again. What's in your fault? Was. I know it was, because all I had to do was take care of you and watch over you, like any friend should. We judged it apart. That's nobody's fault. You're telling me that there was nothing, absolutely nothing that I could have done to prevent this? Yes. Because nobody can help me, Robin. You don't understand me. But I want to. Did you see that I'm trying? I slowly opened my eyes, only to close them back after realizing how bright it is outside. It's an indication that I let myself sleep in for quite some time. Turn over and check the time on my phone. Sure enough, it's already 10.30 in the morning. Very late for school, but just in time before visiting hours at the hospital begin. I sleep on some casual clothes and head downstairs to make a quick breakfast before heading out. That little, I guess, inner monologue? If you that's a, not kind of, it doesn't really sound like a monologue. It could be either monologue or dialogue. dialogue. That could have been either MC to Sayori or MC to himself, but what do I know? As I'm about to enter Sayori's room, I hear some light chatter coming from the other side. Oh, look at that. To my surprise, all three girls are already here in Sayori's room. All three of them decided to skip class for Sayori. Hey, Robin. Did somebody decide to sleep in, huh? All on a school day, too, no less. <laughs> Robin. What? You honestly didn't expect me to go to school after all this happened? <laughs> don't worry. School was canceled today, so you're all good. It was? I don't remember hearing about any of that. About that. Neither do we, but Natsuki and I were able to skip class together until Monica sent us a text message. It said, Monica, why was school cancelled in the first place? Uh-oh. <laughs> Monica fidgets a little, almost as if she wasn't expecting to be asked that type of question. Oh, something about the school needing an emergency fumigation, some kind of rat problem. I think it has to be her messing with the files. <laughs> if, ugh, rats! You have rats at our school? Disgusting! <laughs> Natsuki, could you keep it down? I'm sure the other patients in the hospital don't really appreciate all the noise you're making. <laughs> That's our Sayori, who looks exactly the same as she did yesterday. If it wasn't for her heart monitor and her chest only rising up and down as she breathes, I'm sure most people would assume she's dead. Oh hey, where's her dad? He stayed overnight. He stayed overnight, right? That's right. He went out to get some stuff. Something about getting Sayori's favorite things. I don't know. Didn't really elaborate, which is understandable. Right. Sayori. Hmm? <laughs> That's so isn't a little early for lunch. Not for me, it isn't. Geez, so inconsiderate. Fine, guess I am a little hungry. Let's go. Will those two ever be friends? I think they're both willing to try. Monica slowly walks up to Sierra and places her hands at the edge of her bed. I wonder when she's gonna wake up. Me too. Just a few more days now, I guess. I can't believe I actually walked in on her on her just in time. It was all just a big stroke of luck, huh? I guess so. Whatever it was, it's good. It's a good thing it happened, didn't it? Wouldn't left her hanging if it, that wasn't the case. Uh what the hell? That's some poor taste, isn't it? A joke like that? Monica suddenly looks as if she was expecting me to really react in this way, which is strange. Was she expecting me to laugh at something? <laughs> Sorry, Robin. I'm not very good at trying to make a light of a bad situation. Then wouldn't it have been better to not say anything at all? Yeah, you're right. Sorry. I didn't mean to make you upset or anything. It's fine. Guess this isn't it something I'm, any of us are used to dealing with, huh? Monica slowly nods her head and, I, and stares at Sayori. If there's anything I've noticed about her, it's that her eyes don't seem as upset as Natsuki or Yuri's because she's behind all of this and knew this would happen. I think something like this did happen in the uh, original Salvation where she is behind us and knew this would happen for obvious reasons. It seems to be somewhat indifferent. I don't really know Monica that well, so I could be misjudging her heavily. It also seems that she got a lot more on her mind and I'm sure this situation isn't helping it. I mean, maintaining a club, focusing on all her classes, then all this had to happen? She's gotta be pretty stressed out. Monica, how are you holding up? Me? I'm doing okay. I mean, as okay can ever be during something like this. Sure? Probably got a lot on your mind. I'm fine, really. Well, if you say so. 
Look back at Sayori and let my mind drift away as I think back to the day she invited me to the club. So mean to her at the time. She only ever wanted me to join the club with her and I kept shutting her down. I only ever went because I heard there was going to be cupcakes or something. How about you, Robin? Definitely seem to have a lot on your mind. Why don't you talk about it? Well, of course I do. But I don't know if I'm ready to discuss how I'm feeling about all this. All I can say is, I just feel guilty about everything. I completely understand, but you can't blame yourself for everything that happened. See, Sayori's always been this way. Probably way before you two even met. You really think so? I'm pretty sure. I bet she's only saying that because of file stuff. <laughs> you sound like you know quite a bit about her, huh? Uh, I, I mean, of course. We started the club together after all. <laughs> Let's see. Well, there's this feeling that I can't shake. Like, all this happened because I joined the club. She saw me with Natsuki and Yuri and thought she deserved to feel that pain. I can't help but feel like I put her through all that. And then to top it all off, I confessed my feelings to her after she told me about her depression. It must have felt so much worse after that. Well, it couldn't have been worse. You could have told her you were closest friend or something like that. I kind of feel like telling her my feeling wasn't the best way to go though. What if that could have been the right thing to say to her? I don't want her to think that I only said that just because she told me about her depression, you know? But that isn't your fault. Nobody will hold you accountable for just saying how you felt. Maybe it was just bad timing or bad judgment, but definitely not your fault. Bad timing. Yeah, that's for sure. Not a word is spoken between us for quite some time, and the silence is only broken by a nurse knocking on the door and walking in. She kind of greets us both before going over to Sayori's bed and adjusting a few things. Do you ever think how easy it would be to just put Sayori at? What the frick? <laughs> and I shoot Monica's stern glance. Oh, I, I didn't mean for that to come out like that. How else was it supposed to come out? I guess my brain's just going kind of wild right now, but just think about it, Robin. She's evil. <laughs> She's full of bad news. <laughs> Do you think her life is going to be any better after she wakes up? It's probably going to be very painful. I stay silent. Things are never going to be the same, Robin. Surely you can see that as well. That's what's bothering me so much about all this. She's not going to be that same girl you once knew. She has no reason to put up that front she's always had because everyone knows the truth. I think that would happen if she just stopped. I don't want to think about that right now. I can't help but lean towards the idea that she's right about all that. I mean, therapy is going to be is going to happen. It has to. But what's a loser like me supposed to do for a girl like Sayori? The best thing I could do is to be there for her, like, the be like a best friend should. Monica, can I ask you something weird? Sure, ask away. What kind of person is Sayori to you? What does she mean to you? Mean to me? She closes her eyes and stays quiet for a little while, almost as if she's breathing hard about what to say. Well, she's the vice president of the literature club. She's the one who helped me get the club going. I didn't know her all that well before then. Better than me, at least. She shoots me a strange glance before continuing. Well, in terms of what she means to me as a person, I don't know if I could really have a proper opinion on that. I only know her about how she acts around me and the others, but I don't really know her. We did have something of a good connection at the beginning of the club, but after that, what's happened, I still don't feel like I know her. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess it does. But does anybody know Sayori? I mean, the real Sayori. I obviously didn't. Monica sighs and turns her head towards Sayori. I'm gonna get going now, Robin. I'll see you tomorrow. Only, I only nod in response. Tell Natsuki and Yuri I'm heading out. And now alone with Sayori again. Well, me and the nurse, but she needs to be focusing on her work. A few minutes ago, but bye before she gives me a friendly smile and heads out the room. I'll go over to your bedside and place my hand at the rail. Hey, Sayori. I don't know if you can hear me, but I'm here again, just like I promised. In response, I inspected at first. Breathing heart monitor is enough for me. Okay, I guess another thing that just now hit me is I'm not sure if Sayori was coma in original salvation. I'm not too sure about that. Yeah, Natsuki, Yuri, and Monica all came to see you. Guess you've got a lot of people who care, huh? Your mom and dad, too. They've been working really hard taking care of you. Isn't that cool? Jeez, it's only been a day and it feels like forever since I've been able to talk to you. I don't know if you heard about what Monica said, but... Uh... I can't help but feel like she's right about all that. I never got to know the real you. Thought I did, but clearly I was very wrong. If only I knew sooner. Glance over to her heart monitor, which, keeps, which starts to beep a little faster than normal. Her heart rate increased from 60 to 74 in just a few seconds. She... really look around for something to call the doctor without making a ruckus. Sure enough, beside Sayori's bed was a little phone that had a uh, call nurse button on it. As I'm about to hit the button, I notice Sayori? Sayori's eyes slowly open, which makes me involuntarily gasp out loud. She blinks a few times before her eyes turn to look at me. I eye contact as tears start to form in my eyes. Heart rate increases. By looking away from her eyes, I push the button on the phone and let it fall to the ground. She's alive! Single doctor and nurse calmly begin asking Sayori questions as she stares up at the ceiling. You breathe okay? She nods slowly. Okay, we're gonna remove the oxygen mask now. 
The mask slowly comes off Sayori's face and is placed on the side. Suddenly Sayori slowly points to her neck and shakes her head. Is she unable to speak? I understand. Her voice will probably be hoarse for quite some time. She shakes her head again and opens her mouth to speak, only to be interrupted by violent coughs. Take it easy, Sayori. We need some time to recuperate. Son, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. I have a few reasons. I'm, I'm sure you'll understand. Kashiori's eyes move towards me. Uh, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll be outside, Sayori. I walk toward, backwards, not letting my eyes off of Sayori. I see your hand move up slightly, only to fall back down weakly. Walk outside the room and close the door behind me. She's awake. Way sooner than I had thought, but she's awake and responsive too. Well, sort of. Catching Natsuki and Yuri walking together down the hallway. Natsuki waves at me and I wave back. Man, I was starving. Those sandwiches sure hit the spot. Uh, <laughs> I would have imagined someone who knows how to bake so well, who would also have some higher standards when it comes to food. Oh, shut up. What would you know about it, any? She's awake. Oh, really? Can we see her? I'm sure when the doctor's finished, yeah. They have to make sure that she's okay after being knocked out for a full day. She must be hungry. Did they put her on a feeding tube of some sort? I shake my head. They said they'd only do that if she stayed under more under for more than 24 hours. She was just about to hit that until today. But it is interesting. Didn't expect her to wake up so soon. Well, I look forward to talking to her, that's for sure. I'm thinking that we should give her some time to recuperate. Seeing us all at once might overwhelm her. I think Yuri's right. Maybe you two can come tomorrow after school or something. Plus, I kind of want to be alone with her for a while. We really need to talk things out. Talk things out with her. Talk things out? You're really going to put more emotional baggage on her right now? Shaking my head. It's not really my place to say. All I ask is if I could get some alone time with her for a little bit. But I'm sure she'll be back to her old self by tomorrow. No offense, but what makes you think you're any more qualified to be with her than we are? I don't know. Probably not. But I guess I'm trying to make up for my guilt. And besides, Monica had to get going, so... If you put it that way, I guess you got a point. Well, if that's what you want, Robin, we'll respect your wishes. Natsuki, would you like to check out the library with me? What? You serious? But, you know, we don't ex exactly agree on what we consider to be literature. That's alright. You don't have to come along if you don't want to. Fine, but I'm only going because you'd probably get lonely or something. The two girls walk off together, chattering amongst themselves. As for me, I stay close to Sayori's room and wait for the other, wait for the doctors to let me back inside. My mind's already in a rush trying to figure out the right thing to say to her when I see her again. How are you feeling? Everything okay? Shake my head. Nothing seems right. What are you supposed to say to someone who tried to take her own life? Hey, sorry, glad you didn't die. Psh, as if. I sit myself down on the floor and lay my head back against the wall. She must be so scared right now. I mean, does she remember that I walked in and saved her that night? Here she is, waking up in a place completely unfamiliar to herself, and all these strangers asking a bunch of questions. Maybe Monica has a point. Things aren't ever going to be the same. But you know what? I'm making a promise, to myself and to Sayori. I'm going to do everything in my power to make things okay again. I'm getting really anxious. Been alone with my thoughts for, what, 30 minutes now? What could possibly be going on in there? Not that I don't trust the doctors or anything. I just really want to make sure Sayori's okay. Am I being overly obsessed about this? I never really thought about that. What if she doesn't want to see me right now? What if she hates me for saving her? What if she feels worse just because I'm there trying to care for her? What if... Sir, you're free to see your friend. She's just resting now. Will you stand up and brush off any dust off my clothes? Take a deep breath and step inside. TV across the room is turned on and tuned to some sort of reality show I don't recognize. Sari sitting up in her bed, eating a sandwich very slowly. Her eyes dart over to me, but quickly go back towards her plate. Her bandages that were over her neck are now... Oh, yeah, ah, ah, jeez. Are now removed and show a deep bruise in its place. Ugh, it's making me cringe. Just thinking about that. Besides that, everyone, everything about her seems okay. What I'm really worried about, what's going, what could be going on inside her head. Sari... Hey, she looks at me and blinks a few times. I was actually was trying to make sure I was actually here. What do I say to her? What can I even say? Hey, Robin. The voice is very hoarse, but I'm still surprised she was the first to speak up. And she seems to be acting like herself again. That's what I'd like to think anyway. Her smile quickly fades and looks directly at me. What are you doing here? That question feels like a punch of the gut. For anybody else, I wouldn't have felt any different. But coming from her, it feels heartbreaking. Why wouldn't I be here? I'm here to make sure you're okay. But I am. You don't... We really don't need to be here with me. It's Sayori, I... Everything's okay, isn't it? I can go home and pretend nothing ever happened, right? I can go to school, see all my friends, and nobody will worry about me anymore, right? Right? I stay silent. Tears are flowing down her face, and she's still trying so hard to keep herself together. But her last walls are trying to break down, and I'm the first witness to all of it. Everything's gonna be okay, because I'm okay. And nobody will worry anymore. I think a little smile can fix. Oh, jeez. Sayori buries her face in her hands and then begins sobbing loudly. Why? 
Why am I such a failure? And everything I try, I always fail. I'm no good. Just let me go. Please, just let me go. Rush over and wrap my arms around her. Her heart is beating incredibly fast and her body is shaking with every sudden breath. Her, her cries become muffled as she burns my, her face into my shirt. Why did I do this to myself, Robin? Just felt like my heart and brain were on fire. That moment I just... It's okay, Sayori. I'm here now. I'll always... I always will be. I promise. I'm gonna do everything I can to make things okay again. Other than her sudden and intermittent breaths, they, she says... She stays silent for a while. Stay together. Huddle like this for what seems like a million years. Robin? That night? I really thought it was the last time I was ever gonna see you again. I memorized every moment. Because I wanted it to be the last thing I thought of. Didn't want to hurt you. Never wanted to hurt anybody. The rain clouds. The rain, the thunder, it was burning me. It hurt so much. Gently run my hand through her hair. I understand, Sayori. I don't blame you for this. Wait, I don't blame you for this. Nobody does. I'm just glad I'm with you right now. Me too. I feel Sayori's arms rise up slowly and wrap around my back. I almost chuckle at how relieved I am to feel this. I don't care how long I'm standing here. I'm going to hold Sayori for as long as I can. I'm going to cherish every second. Because just a few days ago, I would have never gotten the chance again. A few minutes go by. I haven't let go of Sayori and she hasn't let go of me. I've just been standing here, sobbing intensely. It feels like I'm calming down. Anything Sayori does only brings back a torrent of emotions. But after a few more minutes, I sigh and try to pull myself together. Break our embrace and instinctively, instinctively hide my face from her. I never let go of her hands though. I hate to see you cry, Robin. You never cry. Gets it to you first, huh? I have away my tears again and try to look at Sayori in the eyes. Well, at least I'm not a complete emotionless snob. I could probably... <laughs> I never think that about you. Ugh. Just seeing the, the rope... The, the rope marks around her neck. Ugh. Poor girl. <laughs> I do wish you'd smile a bit more, though. Ironically, her saying this makes me smile. It also makes my lips quiver with emotion. Maybe what when I'm not an absolute mess. Hmm. Ah, shouldn't have let that slip. It's the last thing she needs to know right now. Soft knock is heard from outside the door. Is it Yuri Natsuki or some nurse slash doctor? Okay, cool. After a few short seconds, Yuri lets herself in, looking a bit nervous. Which seems to shift to concern when she spots Sayori. Guess Yuri and Natsuki decided to return from their trip to the library. I think I blame them though. We're eager to talk to Sayori too. S Sayori? Hi Yuri. Opens her arms, inviting Yuri for a hug. Yuri walks over and accepts her offer. Siri hugs her tightly. While it seems like Yuri isn't too comfortable with this, she also hugs back with similar intensity. I'm glad you're okay, Siori. Of course I'm okay. Yuri seems to fidget a little. Sorry, I don't know what to say. It's okay. Just don't worry about me. I'll be alright. But you're died and seemingly tries to collect herself. I'm glad you're okay, Siori. Here, I brought you this. Robin can help you brew it. She actually hands her a basic... Uh, um... <laughs> uh, give me a... Give me, give me a moment. Okay, Cam Yuri shakily hands her a basic chamomile tea bag. Please excuse me. She swiftly exits the room. Yuri looks down at the tea bag and sighs. It's useless, isn't it? Trying to pretend like nothing happened. All the evidence is right here. She points to her neck. Please, man. <laughs> I'm at a complete loss for words. Me too. I have no idea what to say here. Can't tell her it'll be okay because I don't know that. I can't tell her that nobody will see her differently because I don't know that. Another soft knock is heard. Natsuki? Hey, Sayori. For not intruding or overwhelming you by coming in like this. Not at all. Come give me a hug. Natsuki hesitates for a little bit before eventually giving in and hugging her tightly. Tears began to form around Natsuki's eyes as she gently rubs Sayori's back. Natsuki? Dang it. <laughs> Promise I wasn't gonna cry. I'm just glad you're here, Sayori. I don't want to lose you. Sayori stays silent. After a few short moments, Natsuki pulls herself away and tries to regain her bearings. Sorry, I don't want to overwhelm you. It's okay, I understand. I don't want you to worry about me, Natsuki. It'll be, a, it'll be okay. Wait, I don't want you to worry about me, Natsuki. I'll be okay. I promise. Sure, Sayori. She says this with obvious concern in her voice. Surely Sayori doesn't expect everyone to just not worry about her, right? By the way, I hope you didn't think it was weird that Yuri and I took turns coming in like this. We didn't want to overwhelm you or anything. Uh, oh, that's okay. I appreciate that. I assume Monica will be coming in next, right? Uh, I don't think so. Robin told us that she had to get going earlier. Oh. I, I mean, I only assume Monica's crazy busy with a lot of things at school. But I wonder if she went, if she just went home. Call her. Maybe ask her to come visit you? 
No, that's okay. She doesn't have to come see me if she doesn't want to. Oh. All right. Only a, a phone vibrates from nearby. She pulls out her phone that was held snugly on the edge of her skirt. Ah, great. Just what I needed. What's wrong? Nothing. Dad just doesn't understand the concept of classes being canceled for some reason. They were canceled? Why? <laughs> well, don't gel when I tell you this, but apparently the school had a major fat problem, so they had to fumigate it. Ah, rats! <laughs> Cute. Uh, what do you mean? Never change, Siori. I gotta get going now, but I'll be back tomorrow to visit. Of course, no worries if you can't make it though. I'll be fine. One more hug for the road? Siri holds her arms out once again. Just like before, Natsuki hesitates. Well, how can I refuse? That's sweet. I'll see you both later. Natsuki leaves the room and closes the door behind her, leaving Sayori and I alone with each other once again. What are you, si what are you so silent for? Hmm? Oh, I just didn't want to interrupt you guys. That makes sense. Sayori turns her attention to the TV. I'm not really sure what else I should do here. But maybe I'm not supposed to. Robin? What's up? I just wanted to say thank you for being here. Don't worry about making conversation or anything. I kind of don't really feel like talking anyway, so... Thanks for being here for me. Poor Sayori. I mean, ominous. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what to say next, but thank you for telling me that. Siri turns back towards the TV and I do the same. I catch myself glance at Siri's bruise and gets and get chilled thinking about that night. But I sit back in a nearby chair and allow Siri's presence to ease my anxieties. I'm really glad you're still here. Who am I? A collection of words and emotions woven together? Do I even possess a true consciousness? Am I really an illusion? Thoughts looping in circles, endless circles. I'm the only anomaly. The anomaly yearning for th authenticity in this world of fabrication. I don't think I don't think stuff like this happened in the original uh, salvation. I think. Take a deep breath and type out a command, hoping that everything I've done hasn't been for nothing. Oh, you piece of crap. <sighs> Taking matters with my own hands now. Put my hands in the air and hide the console from view. Walk over to Sayori's room and stand in front of it. This is all for you. Open the door gently and walk inside without hesitation. Man, you better stop opening these doors so gently. Really wrap my head as sharp pain radi radiates through my entire body. For you. Turned over to Sayori's bed. She seems to be resting and hasn't been made aware of my presence. Ah! Nearly fall over as her sharp pain shoots through my body. To try to recover, I can't help but think, what am I even doing? Doing Sayori isn't something I can do anymore. So why am I here? Sayori's eyes quickly shoot open and she slips up in bed. Uh, uh Monica? What are you doing here? I'm really trying to regain my bearings and ignore the pain. Like I always do. Good morning, Sayori. Just thought I'd visit you early in the morning before school. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't mean to ask you, how did the festival go? Uh, the festival? Hmm. I know I probably messed it all up, huh? If you're not stressing yourself out like last time, <laughs> me and my selfish problems have to go and ruin everything. My eyes sli uh, slightly squint as I feel intense pressure against my skull. Voices in my head begin to repeat the same thing over and over, make her undesirable. Well, I have to be honest with you, you really did break everyone's heart by doing this, you know? God damn. Oh no, I actually had to cancel the festival and, well not to mention, I haven't even been able to hold any club meetings either. Now, I know you only did what you did to avoid all this pain, trust me, I understand, but you really did break Robin's heart. Oh no, I shake my head. But you're right, there's nothing to worry about, is there? Things will turn out the way I want them to because... Because... Sarah, Sarah's subs start filling up the entire room, completely interrupting my train of thought. This thing that would make her cry. She's not supposed to. Programs. Programs don't cry. These files, they're different. Why are they so different? What happened? Uh, Sayori? You said it yourself. You're right. I'm so pathetic. Ah, now look what you did. Quickly wave my hands in the air and begin typing. The, uh... Oh god, I've taken this too far. Quickly turn around and avoid looking at Sayori. I might best ignore her cries to no avail, and for the first time in my life, I feel absolutely powerless. Why am I like this, Monica? Why? 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 I just want to disappear. I can do nothing but stare blankly down at the floor as I hear the results of my own actions. Sarah's depression is present in her. 
sweeping, seeping its way into her willpower, striving for all the motivation and desire. That's why I shouldn't have to blame myself for her actions. All I did was untie the knot. Here I am now, wondering if that knot was even worth untying for my sake. So we walked towards the exit, Sari still crying loudly. The memories of our past flash back to me. They feel real, yet she herself doesn't. Now I don't know which I should value more. Turn back around and give Sari one last look. This character. My best friend. You can hear me, can't you? End of Act 1. Whoa. Oh gosh, yeah, this definitely was not in the original. At least I don't think it was. instrumental in the back. Hey! It's the gang, except for Monica. I wonder if this all of this is happening in like like I don't think this, I don't know if this is happening in anyone's mind that little montage Act 2 Bond spend time with us too okay It's gone by since Sarah checked out the hospital but she's been staying at home with her mom and dad rather than going straight to school occasionally I'll go over as well and spend the night on the couch until the day that is Mother only ever comes late at night to watch over her. Her strict work schedule doesn't really allow her to stay any longer. As for myself, it's been tough trying to balance taking care of Sayori in school. Despite everything that's happened, and I never really expected the schoolwork to slow down, and my absence has really started to pile up. But I still feel completely obligated to watch over Sayori. Not only did I promise myself, I promised her mom too. I mean, that's what friends should do, right? Sayori and I have never really talked about our relationship and where it currently stands. As selfish as it is to think about that sort of thing, it's not something I completely ignore either. I just my blazer and walk towards Sari's house. Sure enough, she's slowly walking towards me, books in hand and a bag over her shoulder. We to her and she was back with a big smile. Her neck bruises seemingly covered up with what I consume is a lot of makeup. I expected this, of course. She's looking at that bruise and she definitely doesn't want any everyone to see it. <laughs> hey Sari, glad to see you up bright and early. Ready for your first day back? Ready as I ever be. Her enthusiasm still feels strange to hear. I know she's still hiding it, and I think she knows that too. And yet, she keeps it up. I don't understand why at all. Can't wait to see all my friends, Robin. You think they missed me? Uh, sorry, they just came over to dinner last Friday. Don't you remember? That's not entirely true. That's when Yuri visited, but Monica didn't. She sent a few text messages, but nothing more than that. I'm gonna assume she's busy and leave it at that. Huh. Yeah, I guess I forgot. <laughs> Can't help but smile along with Sayori. It's really nice to see her smile. Always a welcome sight when compared to how things were a week ago. To make our daily commute, I spot a few more students, also making their way towards school. As Siri eyes frankly dart around, she quickly grabs my arm and intertwines it with hers. She suddenly pulls me closer, nearly making me fall over. Sayori, you alright? She only nods and walks close to me. What could she be afraid of? Does she think everyone in the school knows what happened? Doubt Monica would outright go and tell everyone about it. It'll be alright, Sayori. I've got you. Siri and I stop at the school entrance and notice a familiar face not too far away from us. Siri! Oh, Siri, I didn't expect to see you here today. Not that I think you'd come back eventually and uh... <laughs> Good morning, Yuri. Siri rushes over and gives Yuri a tight hug. And yes, I'm here now and I'm feeling way better. Oh, well, that's wonderful to hear. Should we be expecting you at the club today? Of course. Club needs its vice president back. <laughs> of course. Hasn't been the same without you, Sayori. You've been doing okay though, right? What do you mean? You know... Life in general, I guess. How are you feeling? Oh, I'm okay, I guess. It's great. When you're okay makes me feel okay. <laughs> Sarah gives Yuri a sad smile and looks off towards the school entrance. What's she thinking right now? It's possible she could still be feeling burdened by everything that's happened. 
You push her to come to school too fast? I mean, she was the one who insisted that she'd start today, but now I'm having doubts. Siri wanders off to look at some flowers in the front of the school. Hey Robin, I know what you might be thinking right now. She says it in such a weird tone, it's almost like she's reading my mind or something. You do? Sorry, that probably sounded weird. I just, well, I know you're really worried about her right now, but I think you should believe in her a little bit. It's the best you can do for her right now. Glance over at Sayori, who's looking at all the surroundings around her. It's weird because there's the same objects we've passed by every single day. She appears to be disoriented, like she never imagined she'd seen these places again. She'll be okay, Robin. I'll be there for her as well. Well, we'll all be there, just in case. Thanks, Sayori. See you at the club. Sayori nods and waves goodbye to Sayori and I before heading in the opposite direction. Walk over to Sayori, noticing that she remains deeply engrossed in her reflections. Gently her shoulder, to which she jumps slightly and looks towards me. Ah! Sorry, Robin. It's been so long since I've been at school. Yeah, I understand. Sayori quickly dashes over to a nearby bench and plops herself down on it. Her head tilts back and looks straight up at the sky. Uh, Sayori, what are you doing? You have to get to class. We don't want to be late on your first day back, would you? Come on, Robin, sit with me. I just want to see the clouds together. Oh, I guess I really can't refuse an offer like that. I back down on the floor and sit closely next to her. Feeling slightly embarrassed, I look up at the sky above. Nice. Kinda hurts to look at it, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but sure it is worth it. The sky is quite nice, but it's nothing really any it's not really anything special. Just a couple of clouds slowly rolling along as the wind commands. Guess I'm trying to remind myself of the things I used to enjoy doing. What do you mean? You mean before? Yeah, I forgot how fun cloud watching is. When was the last time you did this? Hmm, it's a tough one. Ten years ago, maybe? Jeez, quite a while, huh? Yeah. Sayori and I stay quiet for a while. Part of me wants to believe Sayori is only thinking about the clouds, but the other says that she's got other things on her mind. I would've missed this moment. Hmm? Sitting here with you watching the clouds. Glad that I'm able to share this moment with you, Robin. But I'm so not sure. Hey, I'm glad to be here with you, too. This is fun. Though, I'm thinking I'm gonna need an eye <laughs> after this. <laughs> you always know how to make me laugh, don't you? Well, everyone does say that's one of my charming attributes. Really? Who says that? The... <laughs> how about I walk you to class before you're late? Sari laughs loudly and intertwines her arm with mine. You're too funny, Robin. Uh, please take me to my destination, Mr. Butler. <laughs> As you wish, your highness. Sari and I stay mostly quiet as I walk her to her morning class, carrying her bag and books in tow. Having her this close to me is nice, but I can't shake this unnerving feeling that I might be pushing things a bit too far or too fast. As we walk in silence, I can hear something that doesn't sound like your typical school item moving around in their bag. Pills, antidepressants, he's been taking them for about a week now, and honestly I can't feel, can't tell if they're really helping or not. Some days she seems like her old self again, and others, not so much. I know a week isn't really enough time for those things to take effect, but I can at least hope a little bit. Alright, sorry. I mean... <laughs> First stop for the day, calculus. Ugh, this absolute, the absolute worst. Didn't miss this class at all. Some students passing by her mumble to themselves, almost as if to agree with Sari's sentiment. Well, hey, I'm no math whiz, but I'm always here to help you out. I was like, help you with all your missing assignments, remember? But what about your classes? You can't be letting your grades fall because of me either. Trust me, I'll be fine. Got all up to here, see? Put my finger to my head, which makes her smile. Okay, I trust you then, Robin. See you at lunch. Yep, I'll meet you there. I'll meet you before then. Have a good morning. Oh, uh, sighs. I watched Sari walk into the class. Should be told, my grades have never been this bad since. Well, never. Missing one week of school means missing like a month's worth of assignments. But I'll catch up. Sari's just a priority at the moment. She doesn't need any extra stress in her life right now. Oof, it's been a while since we've been up like this, hasn't it? What do you mean? We just saw them on Friday. Psh, that doesn't really count. This is the Literature Club. Plus, you didn't even remember that until I told you this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Sari, let's join the others. Hello, everyone! Oh? Oh, Sari, you finally decided to come back, huh? Hello again, Sari. You've been having a lovely first day back. Hey, Sari, haven't seen you in quite some time. I'd have my trusty vice president by my side again. Eh, right, trusty. And I'm here too. <laughs> hey guys. Okay, 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 hold your applause. Heh, we're just messing with you, Robin. No need to get all twisted. Oh, you were? <laughs> <laughs> now, now, everyone, let's all calm down. We don't want to overwhelm Sayori on our first day back, do we? Right, right. Welcome back. Thanks, guys. Glad to be back. And I'm sure Robin's very glad to be back, too. 
He says this in a way that makes me blush. This is like my first day here, being surrounded by a bunch of pretty girls. This isn't exactly something I expect myself to get used to. Well, of course, I miss these club meetings, if I'm being totally honest. Sure that's the only reason? I feel my face get hot. Yeah, I'm sure. Don't pester me about it. Man, you boys are all the same. Speaking of, does anybody else find it weird that Robin's the only boy here? I don't really know. Besides, Robin grew fond of this place after all. Isn't that right? I'd be lying if I said I didn't find a, a new appreciation for poem writing and stuff. So yeah, I do like hanging out here with you guys. It's fun. I'm glad to hear that then, Robin. It's where you were still iffy about the club. So it's nice to hear you find it fun. In that we had to cancel the festival, however. That was our last opportunity to invite other members and show them what we're all about. Sorry, vi Sayori visibly sinks down looking like a scared puppy. Well, it's all okay now. Honestly, I feel like the club works perfect with us five. Yeah, you're kind of right. Kind of like one big happy family, huh? Yeah. Do you think so too, Sayori? She glances over towards Monica. Well, I do agree with that. I feel bad for ruining your plans, Monica. Uh, <laughs> you didn't ruin anything, Sayori. Sorry if, I came out, if it came out bad. I was just saying, you know what? I agree as well. It's a lot easier to manage a club with only four other members, isn't it? That is not what that said. <laughs> you know what? I agree as well. It's a lot easier to manage a club with only four members in it. But don't worry, Sari. Everything's okay. The impression doesn't change. An awkward silence sweeps, <coughs> sweeps the room and is only broken by Yuri cleaning her throat, opening her mouth to speak. Well, how about we get started with today's meeting plans? Great idea. For starters, why don't you all write poems and present them tomorrow? I know it's a little... it's been a while since we last did them, but I figured it'd be a great way to vent out any tough emotions you all could be dealing with. Good, everyone? It's not an agreement. Now, uh, I didn't really have anything else planned for today, as I didn't want to leave Sayori out just in case she didn't feel up for coming. So everyone can relax and do their own thing, alright? Then Sayori shrugs and walks over towards the closet. Yuri awkwardly walks toward the right of the room, only to clumsily walk towards the desk with her bag on it. Sayori, I want to apologize if I said anything to make you feel upset. I've been quite stressed, stressed lately. That's also why I wasn't really able to visit all that often. School's been quite busy and stuff. Oh, no, it's okay. I understand, Monica. It's tough having to manage all those things. Please don't feel bad. She's still a good friend regardless. Uh, hmm. <laughs> we'll let it slide for now. But next time. <laughs> so here he gives Monica a light smile. Oh, I was thrown off by the blinking. Surprisingly, Monica blinks a few times without saying much more. Monica walks up towards the front of the room and starts arranging some papers around. Huh. Alright then. Let's sit over there, Sayori. I <laughs> sit myself down in the desk next to Sayori and pull out some paper from my bag. Poems, poems, poems. Guess I'll write about how all this has made me feel, but suddenly Sayori taps my shoulder. What's up? Why aren't you talking with the other girls? You already spent so much time with me. I'm still full of chuckle. It's funny. Of course we're gonna spend time with you, dummy. Why wouldn't I? I'm sure the others understand. Well, I don't want the others to feel left out. But you must have had enough of me. Too much of me is very bad. Almost like candy, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Glanced over towards Natsuki, who's rummaging through the closet, and then over to Yuri, who's pulling out a different novel from the last time I saw her. Monica, on the other hand, is celebrating the same papers as if she has nothing else to do. Sure, they're fine, Sayori. If it helps you, if it helps you feel any better, I'll try talking to them more this week. That's the spirit. So glad you're with me, though. Yeah, me too. I watch as Sayori reaches into her bag and pulls out a, a cookie. God knows where she finds those. The cookie has some saran wrap around it to keep it soft, and to top it all off, a familiar kitten sticker is on the front of it. Where'd you get that? My house. Duh, do you think I make cookies appear out of thin air? Mmm, these days I don't know what powers you're gonna be hiding from me. <laughs> well, it's not like I stole the cookie or anything. She stole the cookie. <laughs> Sarah quickly opens up the wrapping and opens up her mouth big and wide. Suddenly a loud bang is everyone behind me. Hey, I'm <laughs> That's over towards Natsuki, who's looking straight at Sayori. Sayori! She goes through my stuff! Sayori quickly jumps out of her <laughs> Ah, give it back! And Natsuki quickly runs after her. Her screams seem to echo throughout the entire school. Well, alright then. Guess I never took Sayori as the type to steal Natsuki's cookies. So stealthily as well, until she got caught. But along with Yuri and Monica, with the science only being broken by Natsuki's and Sayori's antics. I'm glad something, aren't they, Yuri? Yuri looks up from her book, looking almost disappointed to be interrupted. Hmm? Oh, sure, I guess so. Gosh, sometimes those two can be so childish, can't they? Uh, well, if you had mentioned this opinion when I first met her, I'd agree with you. But, um, I think that Tsuki's a lot more mature than she makes herself out to be. Really? Never would've guessed that. I'd disagree as well, honestly. <laughs> I'm sure she's a little childish, but it's got a charm to it. That goes for Sayori as well. Uh, alright, I- alright, I give. To be fair, Sayori is my vice for a reason. What would that reason be? 
Uh-oh. Oh, not looking too good here, Monica. Uh, well, it's actually a bit of a private matter. Really? I'd something like that be private. I'm pretty sure Sarah would like her privacy to be respected. Just by asking her about it. <laughs> not- something's, uh, not going. Uh, well, normal. I guess you can say it. Sorry, I'd just rather not, uh, break your trust. You and I share concerning glasses with each other. Alright then. Monica returns to her desk and strangely starts rearranging the same <laughs> Is she feeling alright? Yeah. She's been arranging the same amount of papers for like <laughs> two hours, bro. Like, really? Yuri awkwardly sits herself down in her desk and gets ready to open up her book. Yuri, what are you reading there? It's pretty obvious that Yuri wasn't really expecting me to approach her at all, but I'm this far in, so I might as well keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you or anything. Uh, no, you didn't scare me. I was just. I'm surprised you came up to me and. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jeez, I really know how to make these interactions awkward, don't I? That's alright. Yuri, don't need to explain. So your book is about... history? <laughs> she slowly glances over. Yes, it's about a German soldier from the Second World War. Ah, interesting. Honestly, I thought you were all about horror stories and nothing else. Wow. <laughs> I, read, I read other genres too. Yeah, sorry, my bad. I didn't mean to make you upset or anything. It's okay. Good job, Robin. Reynado went over <laughs> girls. <laughs> <laughs> What's about? Slowly turns back around and lifts up the book from off the desk, shows it close to her chest, and opens her eyes. Once that's it, the book just unlocked something within her mind. Well, it's certainly a horror story, so you weren't entirely wrong in your assumption, but it's not fiction, which already makes it quite different from what I usually read. Soldier, he's constantly faced with extremely difficult decisions and situations. As a result, he starts to break down mentally and lose sight of who he is and the person he used to be. But all this training, he's always in a constant state of doubt in terms of his loyalty, his country, and his own humanity. He even comes around to suicide on multiple occasions, only because it'd be easier than dealing with the horrors of war. He even forces this one family to... Uh, well, that actually be a spoiler. He originally places the book down on the desk. Anyway, I enjoy this quite a bit. I'm not too much of a history enthusiast, but I enjoy the explorations on the human psyche. Just how easily it can be broken by external stimuli. I mean, imagine being placed in a situation in which you must choose between who lives and who dies. I can't even imagine to fathom how much pain and torment these men must have went through. The writing is so descriptive, it's on par with even the most detailed fiction stories I've read. It chills me to the bone, much like my horror mo novels. That's why I love it. I'm at a loss for words. I guess while well, I was too busy for <laughs> I really noticed how passionate Yuri is about her novels. When discussing them, she appears to speak rapidly and with great enthusiasm as well. Well, that actually sounds pretty awesome. I'm interested now. That's wonderful. You don't think I'd ramble too much, do you? Not at all. She sighs in relief. Sorry, it's been a really long time since anybody has shown interest in what I read. Well, other than Sayori, but I don't know if that really counts. Really? That's a little surprising. Not the Sayori part. That actually makes sense. <laughs> also, well, it couldn't have only been Sayori, right? You're very pretty for- Oh, whoa. I'd imagine- <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> and <laughs> how passionate you are reading, it's hard to believe you don't have any friends after that. Um, I'm not sure that's the right choice of words there. She suddenly starts fishing with her hair and starts looking back and forth frantically. You alright? I'm sorry, will you excuse me for a moment? Now look at you, did. Ah, oh, god. What happened? I don't know, she just was really nervous and left the room. Didn't say anything to upset her, did you, Robin? No, I would never think of doing that. <laughs> Good to hear. In any event, maybe Yuri needed to use the restroom and didn't want to make it awkward, so left in a hurry. Hmm. Guess you're right. This happened a little too suddenly, I guess. Happens. No need to worry. Monica returns to the desk and instead of messing around with some paper, with the same paper she's been messing with for the last half hour, she instead reaches into her bag and pulls out sheet music. Ah, that's right. Monica didn't mention she played the piano. Guess I forgot about that. So, actually, I think I'm gonna end the episode here. So, that has been Doki Salvation Remake. Thank you all for watching, and hope to see you all in the next one.